If we look at my incentive the first time that I went to see DOA is I didn't take a camera. I didn't think of myself as going there to take photographs, but looking at the scene and listening to the music and really enjoying being there, I thought, how can I contribute? I have art school background. I know how to use a camera. Why don't I do that? I can do this. If I knew how to play bass, I probably would have been in a band. My parents were very supportive, and they were both artists, but they were potters, and yet they were very, very, very supportive of their only child who had gone into the depths of hell to take pictures. <laughs> as far as the punk scene was concerned, my first aha about that was seeing the Ramones on CKVU Vancouver show, and they played Want to Be Sedated. And at that point, I thought, God, I like that song. And started just paying attention a little bit more and then saw a DOA poster and went to a DOA show. All of the pictures of me, I would attribute to Chuck Biscuits because he was the one that always came to me and said, give me your camera, let me take some pictures. That's me in Chicago. That's my press pass from the Georgia Strait, Dan McLeod's signature. I worked there. That's 1981. I probably started doing work maybe in 80 for them. This is actually one of the first pictures I took, which is, is um, at Gambados. That's also at Gambados. That was the first show that I took a camera to, and I didn't have a flash. So the next day I went out and bought a flash for my camera. That's inside at Gambados. It was an art gallery that was in Gastown. They would have shows there, and they would also have, have concerts there. That's Wimpy and Agita, and, and Agita's quite shocked. <laughs> and then I'm taking the... This is the first time I ever met her, and I had met Wimpy before, so he was familiar. She was a little bit frightened by me. That's, that's a photograph of Al. Al um, is not with us anymore, and um, well-loved by the people that knew him. Uh, buddy Selfish. We keep telling Ian that we want Buddy back, but he says no. Buddy has retired. That's the first photograph I ever had published. It's backstage at O'Hara's. Thank you. And it, it's in the Complication album. They use that photograph, and then they put a little thought bubble, and it said, you say hello, we say fuck off. And I went, oh, they could have said something nice. But they did credit me, so that was good. That's, that's a battle. It's always a battle to get your name on the bottom of things. This is a photograph I've used quite often or from this series. There's 36. That's the back door of the Smiling Buddha. The whole series consists of me convincing Chuck to get the paper bag out of his hands and down to the ground. Then everybody got a cigarette and I'm shooting the whole thing. And then these are the very few at the very end where they start posing, and then they said, okay, we're ready. And I said, I've got what I want. <laughs> I left. This is at Gary Taylor's, and you can always spot Gary Taylor's because there's that cheesy mirror thing that goes around that's metal, I think. This is one of my favorite ones of Randy and, and Brad in San Francisco. That came out of the Vancouver Sun. Neil Hall's interview with me. And that's Jim. I don't remember that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots there. There's more. There's Ellie O'Day. I worked with her a lot at the Strait, where she would write about all the concerts she went to. Mm -hmm. And I would put all the pictures of the concerts that I went to. And, and it was really, I loved the fact that they didn't have to be the same. You know, like she just did what she liked. And sometimes we were at the same thing. And now she's working with the International Film Festival. That's the Modernettes. There's Mary. There's famous people in lots of pictures, but actually one of these people became Bob Rock. They were not the greatest loved band, especially by Dick Clark, because of their name, the Paolas. Um, this is that outdoor concert that happened in the rain or mist. It was more misty than it was rainy, I think. 
that the pictures have a s- almost surreal feel to them because of the soft softness of them mm-hmm. in the rain. This would be Rock Against Radiation. Yeah. At, at Banyay <laughs> Park. There's someone standing, someone standing completely. Oh, there we see who it is under the blanket. This is the one of Randy that I find really amazing because there's no reason that that picture should be as absolutely strange as it is with the haunting tree in the corner and the scarecrow. Well, he is in the scarecrow position kind of thing, but there's a there's a quality that the camera found there that, that I didn't see with my eye. Somewhat stoned, perhaps. Yeah, I think, you know, the number of hits of acid increases over the years. I was on 170 (laughs) hits of acid. You know, if you ask him now. (laughs) Shapes are always really, really important to me. Um, If I was a better person, I would have been a director and thought these shapes up, but I just point the camera and find them. And umbrellas, you know, in this picture, unusual sort of thing to be there. Just the shape. That's Nick, pointed sticks, Nick. And Chuck on the left. And this is one of the few pictures I have of R.J. Might as well mention him. <laughs> and again, there's their city. I don't, I don't know that there's been very many concerts ever in that place. You see, those are... The- That's my boy. <laughs> Wimpy said to me, he said, I don't know what you did wrong, but your son is absolutely normal. <laughs> So hi, Keith. He's still got freckles. And some of these I printed just because it actually shows, though the crowd wasn't huge, it shows people in the audience, and people love looking, and they may not find themselves there, but they may find other people they know. This is the Smiling Buddha sign um, on Hastings Street looking west. And it wasn't often that I would have my camera out of the out, out of the camera case on the street in those days. This is from the back of the house at the Smiling Buddha. Um, Lashman would have been to the right of those pictures. Always a chess game going on. The wallpaper remained consistent through all of the years of the Smiling Buddha. There's Jerry having his head massaged. People would come up and say, take a picture of me, and I would not pose them. They would just do what they were going to do. There's Dawn. I mean, some of these photographs are are nice because of who is in them, mm-hmm. and other ones are nice because of the shape, and other ones are nice because what's going on, on in the photograph. Because we read the pictures. We there's a photo language that we're using, a way that our eye is moving. I used to always really like when I showed someone a photograph, watching where their eye went in it, because I wanted to trap them as long as I could in the picture. I I shot with zooms, um, 35 to 70 and 70 to 150. So um, I could have continued. I didn't have to change position. That was my theory on zoom. So if I got a spot, to stand, then I could stay there and do close-up. You know, if I wanted to go in on Chuck there because he turned and looked, I could have gone closer in on him or pull back a bit. 35 would have been as far back as I go. Just try. I also don't contort myself. I watch other photographers and go, oh, God, don't do that. Don't lean away over and squat down. And I just try to stand there and take up as little room as I possibly can. Because I have to be aware of there's people around me that want to see what I'm photographing. Mm. And there's pictures of Dimwit. And this would be him in Rude Norton with guest singer Art Bergman. And again, (laughs) with crazy pants on that time, Dimwit. Why have you never taken, um, gone from photography to film, like shooting moving pictures? No interest? No, I like to pick the moments. Mm-hmm. I like I I like to. I think there's some freedom. I don't know about film. Like I haven't I haven't shot video, um, but I think there's a freedom. There's that that moment where you're 
watching, you're watching, you're watching, and then you caught it. Mm-hmm. I think there's a catch and release quality to to actual photography that you don't get with film. Maybe you do. Um, yeah. And I I like that decision making. And obviously, not every one of them is a is a good decision when I push the shutter. But I know what I'm hunting. I'm hunting definitely when I'm photographing. The comment is there's no equal representation of women and men. And, I mean, certainly looking at your body of work, I see a, I see a heavy, heavy male um, domination in terms of the musicians that were ruling that scene. Would you agree with that? <clears throat> Visually, yes. It didn't feel like that at the time. It didn't feel like you just walked into the men's world. They just didn't make you feel that way. They didn't make me feel that way. They didn't make other women feel that way. Um, There were definitely women in bands, um, Mary Jo being one of the prominent ones, but the whole environment that you were in didn't feel like pickup bars and that kind of stuff that was what other places were like. This was um, called the dance floor at the Smiling Buddha. (laughs) There was a bit of dancing going on and a lot of pushing and shoving. A lot of bands have worked really hard to have the dance floor be not an all-male place. I know DOA has spoken of that on live records, I've heard, like give some room for some women to come up and dance. At some point, they painted stars on the back of the Smiling Buddha but they still had the pipe covered up. At some point, they took the pipe, uncovered the sewer pipe across the back. And this is what they did somehow with the, um, the, sewer, the sewer pipe on the stage was they decorated it with sparkly Christmas decorations that, mm-hmm. to cover it up. You know what I found out a while ago, and I mean, it was not that long ago, I found out that the Buddha actually has a basement. Now that, to me, is one of the scariest things I've ever thought of. Is that? Yeah, um, Chris, are, Chris, yeah, that's the shades, yeah, with uh, Mike Rasevic. There's Dave looking like he's going to bring us a burger. This would this this arched part is O'Hara's. When you see that that rainbow like black and white arch, this is the Dills playing, or it could be rank and file. At that point, I'm not sure. I think they probably are still the Dills. have to check a poster. They had a good run. They, they did, yeah. There's Tony and, and Sid Sick. And there was an epidemic of those It's Marked in Duplicate stickers, which to this day DOA uses the little um, hooded guy as, as a logo. That's my punk stamp on his hand. This looks like a house party. Yeah, that was at one at the party house on Gore. That never got raided. La- live bands playing in the basement, loud as could be. We run into other pictures. Lynn took some photographs also of the graffiti in that house. Dave Gregg said they like to think of it as country living in the city. It didn't have any running water and things like that. 